everybody, it's Tyler here at Riverbots High School, checking in 39V Volt coming in out of Michigan here. Really great looking robot that they brought here. So far we'll be diving in more into this team. Already had two event wins and two skills championships already. Juice, congratulations on the awesome success that your team has been bringing. But take a look at this robot, really well built as we go through in here. I love the different uses of Delrin they're using. We'll be talking about their modifications to their Lady Brown mechanism, their gold clamp a lot more. And we'll be diving a little bit more into their CAD as well too that we have up on screen. So let's learn more about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. So Victoria, let's talk about this mobile goal clamp that your uh, team's using. Talk to me more about just uh, how it's been used, a little bit more about it. And then yeah, notice you got a cool guider on the front of your robot too. Yes, yeah, so um, we have a really nice clamp over here. So what's special about it is basically um, whenever an whatever angle the clamp is clamped on, whether it's like this angle or like the flat angle, it has the same distance to the conveyor. And then also this is like this plastic piece is like a a ring guider, so it basically guides the ring um, onto the mobile goal, like preventing it from falling. So the guider is kind of unique. I really haven't seen like something quite like that on other robots. Uh, you know, we see like the, that type of conveyor, obviously, but like, what made you come up with that type of guider for your robot? Uh, it really just it really helps. Um, it, it serves two um, uh, two two goals. So first, it, it blocks the, the the last ring, the sixth ring, from uh, so from hitting our hook, and also it guides our ring to move like forward. So that we can cl clamp the goal uh, a little bit uh, to the front of our robot instead of making it uh, too close. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to help help to guide the ring from falling in. Jessica, talking about the sensors you're using on a robot here, I noticed you got a uh, color sensor, and then you also noticed uh, you mentioned that you're using a distance sensor in your robot too. Yes, we use them in our intake. So what our color sensor is down here. When we first intake the ring, um, let's say we're red alliance. If we accidentally take in a blue ring, then the ring will go up. And here is a distance sensor, so. The color sensor will send a flag in our code to the distance sensor, and when it reaches here, then the uh, conveyor will ro rotate backwards like really fast, and it'll fling the ring off, so we never have to worry about accidentally scoring for the opposite team. And yeah, how's that been working out for you so far, would you say? It's been pretty good. Like sometimes we, yeah, see, that was a great example. Sometimes when we accidentally, like if we're just rushing to get rings and stuff and we accidentally bring in another ring, we don't have to take the time to send it back out. We can just move on. I, I love how that's programmed, by the way, too, where it just kind of just does this extra, like, ugh, thing if they get it out. <laughs> I like it overall. So very cool. Uh, Simon on here, lots of great stuff going on uh, with your Lady Brown mech. I'd love to hear about maybe some changes you made from the standard Lady Brown that we've seen out there and a couple other great highlights on this robot, too. Yeah, there's a very detailed fun part of our Lady Brown lineup of the plastic. We have the, the, the lower part of plastic uh, a little bit to the front of the upper part. Uh, we just found because uh, when, it's on the, when it's on the top, when it's uh, above the wall stake, uh, we just found it really helped the ring from falling in, even though we, wouldn't, we weren't able to pull uh, push all the way down. So that's an uh, interesting uh, little detail about the Lady Brown. Um, and moving on to our, our intake, we also, after watching a lot of secret events, we decided to, uh, originally we had a, a 11 watt uh, uh, motor that powers the full intake. We, we split it into two parts, uh, two stages, the bottom one by a 5.5 watt mo it motor, and the, the top, mo uh, top layer, uh, top stage of the inter intake was also uh, powered by a 5.5 watt. So it allows us to load a ring on our Lady, arm, uh, Lady, Br Lady Brown arm, and, uh, and then store a ring at the bottom of the intake so that we can move around with it uh, and then score two rings very fast. Um, maybe one more, one more um, interesting detail is the, is, the, is the intake lower conveyor. It has uh, vertical, um, vertical plastics. It's, it's really low friction. It really helped from, it really helped. We found it much, more, much better than, uh, than just flat um, curved plastic. Looking at changes throughout the uh, competition season, what major changes has your team made either coming into this event or maybe throughout the uh, season? Uh, yeah, the, the intake uh, plastic was one that I already mentioned. The, the plastic the, that we changed it from a, a flat curved plastic to a uh, vertical um, curved shaped plastic is much lower friction. And uh, other, other changes in, uh, includes like the clamps geometry of the, the layout of the, of the pistons. Um, like before we had we had the the lower the lower um, uh, the lower 
uh, mounting point of the of the piston uh, to to like to front, and it's it's uh, pushing too hard that it's bent this C channel that we had, uh, and we switched it to steel, and we also uh, changed the geometry of the of the piston so that it helped too. And moving forward, we are thinking about uh, more improvements, such as making the robot shorter overall and having the arm um, arm shorter, so that we can fl flip all the way over to knock rings over and also score on the lion stick uh, during Auton. And maybe we are going for a higher hand in the in the future too. Speaking about making changes, by the way, I saw you guys are using SolidWorks uh, for your robot. So Eric, talk to me a little bit more about. Uh, of course, your uh, CAD design, what you're doing. I'd love to hear, like, when you're making changes, maybe how do some of those iterations in SolidWorks work for your team? Oh, so um, we use SolidWorks because as a school club team, we only have like three lab sessions per week. Uh, and building a mechanism uh, physically takes a lot of time. And therefore, it's always easier to get the geometry right in a CAD so that even if like not everything works, at least you know that things are going to fit and things are going to be in the right place. And um, so we always CAD our robot before uh, we build it uh, in lab. And so this is the CAD of the current robot. We're also doing the same for our uh, new iteration. So yeah, this is the uh, robot that we're probably going to uh, rebuild after this event. Um, so we realized, realized that uh, a cute game changer is having a tier 3 hang. So uh, we added that new mechanism here. Um, uh, this is uh, inspired by like a Taiwan team. And essentially, the, the arm raises up. And then the PTO will pull that arm down, uh, and then the passive arm, uh, the passive hooks will hook on to the ladder, and then so that this arm can release up and grab uh, the next rung. How quickly are you looking at trying to get a, a climb in, like on tier three? Um, uh, like uh, we're gonna try to aim like uh, for under 15 seconds. Sure. And um, we're also gonna try climbing not on the ladder side but on the post side because then we can also score the top of the top 80 round. A lot of great stuff going on with this team, by the way. 39V, thank you so much for telling us more about it. By the way, you have nine teams here. That's awesome to see all the great support that this program is having as well, too. So we can't wait to see how your team does and all these other teams that you have here as well, too. So good luck to all the teams in 39 here and throughout the rest of the season. Thanks a lot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.